All right, guys. Well, today is the day that we're gonna get this CD truck transmission ready to go into this Colorado. So first, what we gotta do is take this bell housing off right here. So to do that, we're gonna take a tape measure, a marker, and we're gonna go to the second rib here. We have the first one here, second one here. It's the, goes all the way around the transmission. We're gonna measure forward an inch and seven eighths and make them line all the way around the bell housing. That's where we're gonna cut it. All right guys, well, I got it all marked out. Inch and seven eighths here. I think it was, if you wanna go off the front marking, it's about an inch there. As you can see from the front rib, but I measure from the back rib forward. Inch and seven eighths. I ended up using a caliper, made things a little easier. I just set it for inch and seven eighths and then I can just work my way around making marks. After I made a bunch of marks, I connected all the dots made myself a mark. Now I'm going to take a four and a half inch cutoff wheel. I'm going to go around and cut the whole thing off. And then <clears throat> you don't have to be super precise. If there's a little bit of a gap there, it's not going to make a difference. Um, if, if it touches, that's, that will matter. We want to make sure that the adapter plates, it's fully flush against this inner mating surface where it seals and sits flat against. We want to make sure it sits flat against that. <clears throat> But uh, what we'll do is we'll cut this off here and then um, we'll take the adapter plate, we'll put it on there and make sure it's not touching anywhere on the surface and then it's fully seated up against the face of the where the bearing retainer plate sits on from the factory. If not, we can take a, a sanding wheel and sand it back a little bit um, to make it fit correctly. So, but right now I'm just gonna cut the bell housing off, so that's what we're gonna do right now. One thing I want to show you guys inside here, there's these ribs. You are going to be cutting through some of those ribs. So make sure you cut all the way through the bell housing and the rib. As you can see there, you probably have to come in from the inside here and kind of snip them right here too. Hope that's clear. All right, that was easy. Take a look. You can see here now, these little, well, that one kind of came off, but I'm just gonna sand these down. So got a little sharp edge here. This one you can see it kind of sticks up. So I'm gonna sand that down. Same there, all the way around. We're gonna have a flappy wheel and sand those down because <clears throat> what we're gonna do next is we're gonna unbolt this. And so we basically just need a flat plane. Actually it doesn't even need to be flat from here because on the adapter it sticks out in this section right here a little bit and then the plate comes out so i think this will give us plenty of room but i'm just gonna sand that off quick and then uh we'll be good to go all right so i got it all sanded oh missed a spot i'll have to come back and hit that yeah, they're all smooth now. So I'm gonna hit this with the sander quick, and then we'll take these bolts out and we'll test fit the adapter plate on there and make sure it doesn't uh, interfere with this. I don't think it will. I just took a quick measurement. I think I cut a little too much, but again, that doesn't really matter too much. You'll see here in a minute. 
why it doesn't really matter. Um, it'll just give me a gap between the plate and this case right here. It'll just give me a slight bit of gap, but it won't affect anything. So, all right. All right, so 12 millimeter socket. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this thing off. Now, the OEM gasket is right here. Um, you can remove it and use RTV if it makes you feel better. I just go ahead and reuse the gasket. All right, so with the bearing retainer plate off, front cover, let's take a block of wood from the trans, raise the bottom up. That'll allow me to It'll allow me to bolt this up, get it in position here. Yeah, I cut too much on this one, but again, that's okay. So if you're in the same boat as me, putting the stock bolts in, those won't work. So this plate is just a, a plate we just did, but I'm going to show you here so you can see how it sticks out from there, so there's a gap, but that's okay. That doesn't matter at all. So this one's gonna clear just fine. Yep, that's how it should look, just like that. So, now the next thing to do is get some hardware, bolt the plate on, get the slave cylinder put on with the lines, and then put the bell housing on, and then it's ready to go on the truck. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we got our plate. Go ahead and slide it on. Kind of locks in position. Got our bolts. Get a 6 millimeter Allen, tighten them up. Plates on. So next thing we're going to do is get the slave cylinder ready to go on. All right, so here's the slave cylinder. It's standard T56 slave cylinder. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop this bearing off. So it just pops off. And then in your kit, it should come with two O-rings. These O-rings are going to go on to here. And those are just to help keep the slave spacer on. It's going to go on like this. And it just keeps it on during installation so it doesn't fall off. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on and then the bearing, the bearing just snaps on top of the slave spacer like that. Okay, the slave spacer is installed. You can see there. So now the next thing we have to do is get the hydraulics ready to go in. So we're going to unscrew this bleeder. We're going to pull this roll pin out right there. We're going to push that roll pin out, pull this out, and we're going to throw both of these away. We're not going to use them anymore. Now your new remote bleeder that came in your kit is going to come with a crush washer and a dash three fitting that's going to screw into here. And then it should have also come with uh, an adapter fitting that's going to slide into here, has a little um, seal on it. It's going to slide into here. You push the roll pin back in and that'll adapt both of these ports to a dash three. Now it doesn't matter which one you use even though this one, this factory was a bleeder, we're going to use it as the feed line. It doesn't matter which one you use it. There's two, port, there's two ports going into the slave. The important thing is that once it's installed, the bleeder line is on the top port so that the air can escape. Um, so we're going we're gonna to adapt both these to a dash three, 
and then we're going to put the bleeder line actually on the what was the factory feed line and the new feed line is going to go where the bleeder was so i'll show you here in a minute okay so the slave is all assembled and ready to go in i've gone ahead and put the fittings on you can see here got the cr copper crush washer in here but this was the bleeder before it is now our feed line so this will hook up to the master cylinder clutch master cylinder on the vehicle and what was the feed line before is now our bleeder it has the long four foot with the bleeder end on it so the slave cylinder is now ready to go in got the spacer on it and got the both lines on now we're just going to go and put it in place when we do this we're going to be the lines are going to be coming out the um as, as it sits in the vehicle is coming out the passenger side and your kit came with two m6 bolts All right, with the slave tightened up, we're gonna take the bleeder line, which is on top. I'm gonna run it through the slot over here on the plate. And the feed line, we're gonna run through the bottom slot plate. And now we're ready for the bell housing. So for the bell housing, we're gonna stick it over the input shaft. We're gonna swoop it through the lines here. And this line got out of the slot, so you have to put that back in. And centers on the centering ring, line up your holes, and then put your bolts in. All right, there we have it. This CD truck transmission is now ready to bolt up to an LS. See here, we got our lines that ran freely. So here's our bleed line, our feed line. Slave cylinder is in there with the spacer. To the lines here. Okay, so the only thing we have left to do now to get this ready to go in the Colorado is to put the clutch in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not sure I'm going to cover that. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I'll show you guys once I get it in, but um, the clutch is, you know, it's, it's like putting any other normal clutch in. This, this kit uses a standard T56, um, LS T56, um, like an F-body O2 Camaro uh, clutch and flywheel. Uh, doesn't use anything special. Uh, the only um, thing that um, is unique to the clutch setup is the disc that comes in the kit. It has an extended uh, snout, which I'll show you once I get it installed in the in the truck. All right, so we got the clutch installed. As you can see here, don't mind the purple pressure plate. It's an old pressure plate. This is still a cyber clutch that uh, we have on here. This is a 3,400 pound HD pressure plate. Um, with the uh, six puck disc, it's good for a thousand foot pounds of torque, um, which is good since we plan on making um, eight eight fifty uh, wheel horsepower. This will we'll need all the holding power we can get. Um, but you can see here how the hub on the disc sticks out far enough. That's so that we get full engagement on that spline input. Um, I. Didn't get a video of putting the pilot bearing in, but uh, it's like a standard pilot bearing. Um, it comes pressed into that adapter, the billet adapter, the bearing into the billet adapter, and then you just press the whole thing right into the right into the end of the crank. Um, with the, uh, it doesn't really matter if it's bearing side out or or not. We usually put it with the bearing side out. Um, and yeah, you pop your pilot bearing in, the alignment tool. 
for the disc and then put your pressure plate on just like a normal you know normal clutch install make sure everything's clean so now that the clutch is installed in the truck and the transmission's ready to go i think we are good to go so i'm gonna end the video here uh we got the trans ready to go the truck's ready to go uh, we're gonna get it put in and uh get it filled with fluid uh one trick with filling these trans with fluids same with the ar5s is you can see here this is the fill port once it's in the vehicle it's really difficult to, to use, use a pump or something to uh, fill it what i do is make sure it's drained all the way uh, get all the old fluid out and then i go inside the vehicle pull the shifter off and i pour it right into the tail housing um, i think these trans here take four and a quarter quarts ar5 uses three a little less than three but i always put full three in um, these ones take four and a quarter i believe so I just dump it out right into the tail housing and then uh, put the shifter back on and you don't have to deal with trying to pump it into the side port here. So, all right guys, well, I hope you found this video helpful um, and informative. If you have any questions, put it in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.